Hey y'all, this is Charlie of Keep Drawing Charlie, and today I'm bringing you another long video to explain how I made this luck dragon, whose design is based on a Japanese kitsune fox. The client for this build was happy for me to pretty much take artistic liberty with the design, as long as it took inspiration from a kitsune. So while I was initially interested in a much more white-red colour scheme, I also had to keep in mind that this puppet would be used to interact with children in an already existing puppet troupe over in America. Now I know from experience, with people interacting with Tatsuko, my personal dragon puppet who's white in colour, that his muzzle and face have dulled slightly due to being petted so much. So at least for this kitsune, I had to lean more on fox colours so she wouldn't need cleaning every day that she was used. Okay. So with the design agreed with the client, it's on to the pattern. Now on the last puppet I made, Yammer, the white and blue one, I spent some time developing and reworking the pattern to make it simpler and easier to work with. I brought the pattern count down from over 20 pieces to about 16, much easier to handle. Here's how the new pattern looks, along with the cutout of where the eyes will be placed. Okay. I know this is going to suck, but I'm going to gloss over this new blink mechanism right now as I'm going to make a whole video explaining how I make these in the future. If you want to be made aware of the video's release, please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button to get an alert when it goes live. Here's the head with the sculpted nose, inner mouth and the eyes installed. Now on to painting the inner mouth. Easy stuff! I make sure to mix in some hex flex to keep the paint more malleable and stop any cracks from forming in the final paint job where the teeth might rub against each other. I also make sure to paint the nose and use a hair dryer in between to speed up the drying process so I can layer more paint. I decided that the first shade of red was too deep in colour, I wanted it to be more pinkish. So the second layer fixed that right up. Another great way to level up your paint job is to add texture. I dab the lightest colour I use onto a sponge, dab it off a bit more so there's barely anything there, then apply it to the tongue to give it a slightly more realistic paint job. And here she is all painted up. Alright, and we are now on to patterning the body. I needed to make a new pattern, as this client wanted to have their other arm thread through the body and into the tail to have it move around. Also, the client was quite a bit smaller than me, so adjustment was needed. Also, shout out to the industrial sewing machine I got for free and that my mum fixed up for me. This thing is a lifesaver, and I'd never be able to make all these puppets without it. It is a goddamn beast. It goes through four layers of fur fabric with no trouble. So in this clip, I've adjusted the body, and I'm also drawing on where I want the belly fur to sit. I keep leaving the room because I'm checking how the mock-up sits in the mirror in the front room, and how much of the belly will show when I've positioned it on my shoulders. And this is the first mock-up test for the body. Here I've chain stitched the other two tails to the middle one that has the arm running through it. This way, the other tails move with the main one, so you can control all three with one movement. All right, so we're jumping onto the horns. I really love the shape of these. They're so flowing and ethereal. I take my thickest plastazote and layer it up three times to give me the bulk I need to carve the horns back down to a round finish. Each layer gets some contact glue so it holds firm.
Okay, I want to start this bit by saying it's important to wear face protection when you're dremeling foam, or anything for that matter. The little particles fly off and you definitely don't want them in your eyes or in your mouth. It's so gross. So wear your goggles and a face mask for protection here, just like me. Eventually though, I get them all smoothed out and give it a few layers of latex as a cheap base layer. Then Hexflex to paint it properly. I then buffed some stunning gold paint over it to give it this fantastic shine. I used washi tape to keep the red line sharp and then when we were finished, I made sure to give them a few coats of spray sealant. With the antlers in, it's time to pattern the face. Instead of using cling film now, I do one base layer in scotch tape or painter's tape anything that doesn't cling too harshly to the foam, and then go over the top with duct tape. This means I can remove the pattern from the foam easily, but still have it be a strong pattern that doesn't lose its shape. I then stick it to paper so it's easier to deal with, and I can work out my darts to make it lie flat. Remember your registration marks and to note where you'll need your turnings. You can see on this clip where I've transferred it to the fur fabric that I first make an outline of the pattern piece and then add my turnings separately. This is so I have a nice crisp line to follow when I sew them together in my huge ass sewing machine. Also, remember to mirror your pieces. Unless you have an asymmetrical design, you only need to pattern half of the head, then mirror and cut two pieces most of the time, apart from the snout and the forehead on this build. I then start clipping them together for sewing. Here I am, pinning down the fur to where it needs to go and making some adjustments to the length of it before I glue it down. Then, it's basically taking my time with a hot glue gun and getting the fur stuck down to the face, making sure to trim my seam lines so there's less bulk to the head. I don't worry about where the fur meets the nose or the filament line too much, as I'll use an airbrush to take a darker colour around there to help blend it in later. Here's the first proper brush down after the preliminary trim. She needs a little bit of work, 
but it's nice to see the progress you make along the way. Here she is after getting all trimmed up. And here's a test video to see how the body looks with the head. This is the much enjoyed worm phase of luck dragons. It's just like wearing a big fur jacket. I got so busy at this point that I didn't really take any other videos while working on the puppet, but I did make sure to take photos as I went. Here, I spent far too long carving out the legs out of upholstery foam. I also get in contact with the client because I couldn't work out if I wanted three or four toes on the back foot, but we ended up going for three to keep it more in line with Tapsico, the original Luck Dragon. Here are all the pieces cut out. And here's how they lay on the body. Remember if they look a bit small, you've probably got about the right size because the fur fabric will add a lot of bulk to them. Then it's on to patterning the legs, which also took forever and I figure how much it sucks on each build until I get to it. Ugh. But regardless, I get it done. Get the fabric cut out and attach it all together on the sewing machine. And then I hand sew it closed around the legs. Again, taking forever, making legs is always like at least a week of work easily. Also probably because I get executive dysfunction over it, and because making legs is kind of boring compared to the rest of the build. Here's a nice comparison of how the toes look unshaved on the left, and shaved down on the right. And the legs are done! Now it's time to sew, stuff, and attach the other tails. In hindsight, I definitely overstuffed them. Keeping them looser would make them easier to pop it through the arm that has the tail in it. And here's the first full test for her. Her face looks so goofy here because her ears aren't pinned back and she needs all her airbrush markings and scales still. Quick back pick, mostly for myself, so I can make sure her offside legs sit nicely. And then it's onto the finishing touches. The claws of Rayo were purchased from Farista on Etsy and they were given a light sanding to make sure the paint would adhere to the surface. Then they were given a couple of coats of gold paint and sealed. Then it's on to patterning the scales for the face. All the scales get a quick lick of paint and sealant before they're ready to be applied. Then it was on to application. For the arm scales, I have to shave the fur very short so the scales don't just float on the surface, but look properly embedded. The claws go in nice and easy with the flange to hold them in on the inside of the fur toe. It's time to airbrush details, and Rayo has a lot to do. I start with a gradient to the leg fluff. On this photo here, you can see the before, and then this one, the after. It's only subtle, but I think it works nicely. Then onto airbrushing the face and ears. Rayo has these wonderful dark markings around her eyes that I managed to get nice crisp lines for. Then I add definition around the scales, nose, and the mouth. I also airbrush the inner ear to a dark pinkish color but I totally forgot to take photos of that. Sorry. Next is this sick go faster stripe down the back. Hell yeah. And as you can see, I tape off the surrounding area after brushing it all down to keep the lines tight and clean. Now we have some nice surgery to attach the whiskers and anchor them inside the top of the mouth where they can't be seen. And here she is all done. I snapped some photos of her draped over chairs in my workroom and on my sofa where she proceeded to take up the whole damn thing. A 
and here she is in all her glory, Rayo, the Kitsune starred luck dragon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has given you some inspiration for your own puppet, and maybe some help along the way. Or if nothing else, I hope it was entertaining to watch. I want to say a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters who help keep me working on these wonderful creatures each month. Their names are on screen right now. And an even bigger thank you to those in my Dragon tier and higher. Ameris, Ashley Cole, Ben Orchard, Black Fox Ori, Cosbay Fan by Reed, Daniel Griffin, Daniel Wilde, Die Cats and Kernigan, Emily, Emma Potter, Expletive Deleted, Harry Palmer, Hazel Tyler, Jazz Cooper, May Explode When Shot, Nayuta, Peter Godwin, R. Kane, Ross, and Will Vanna. If you'd like to help keep me making and developing new puppets, please consider donating to my Patreon, where you'll gain access to various puppet write-ups, diaries of development, first dibs at any commission slots, and your name in the credits of my next video. If we reach my current goal, I'll release the pattern for the Luck Dragon Head to my patrons for free, so check it out at the link below. Did you know Rayo is touring around renaissance fairs in North America? Check out Carrie's Creatures, linked in the description below. And if you meet Rayo in person, give her a scritch under the chin for me. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get back to you with an answer as soon as I can. If you'd like to see my other puppet work, and what dragon I'm working on next, check out my link tree in the description and that will take you to all my social media pages and my website. If you're interested in commissioning a dragon puppet, please send me an email through my website for further details. Bye all, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.